this video, we're going to be looking at SQL Server Integrated Services to create an unattended process that's going to call our business objects, which will be running from SQL Server 2008 R2 as a job. The intent of this video is not just to look at SSIS, but to show in, in, through SSIS how we can use VSTA to call multiple object calls and string those object calls together to create a composite application and give you a glimpse into how the object methods are called. So here's the four applications that we're going to be using. This is SQL Server Integrated Services. This is management, uh, SQL Server Management Studio where we're going to execute our job and set our job schedule up. This is our Agility Explorer where I have a couple of views that we're going to be using to look at data. And then for my last video, the intro video, I talked about using this order entry screen uh, to, um, to actually enter orders outside of Macola and show how our business objects can be called from somebody else's desktop application. So we're going to start off by entering an order. And we're going to do that for 901. And this customer is doing a credit check. This is done again through our objects. We do not want to place the order in credit hold. And we're going to enter uh, a pop pull item bike PP. Now actually this this product was actually written for a customer who deals as you can see in things like um, deals and cases. Uh, the product wasn't originally intended to handle uh, pop pull items but it calls our objects. So because of that it's going to automatically create the pop pull item just because it did a standard object call. So you can see it's a fairly robust application integrating our object library. Now let's move over to SSIS. This is a data flow diagram for SSIS. It's going to start with a, a SQL select script, then it's going to move on to do some VST scripting, and then it's going to pump that out, output into a um, into a data file as a log file that I created. This is a connection to my desktop and to a database. And if I do a preview, we can see that I already have data here. I'm looking for anything that's a pop pull item that's unreleased. So it was just wait and it passed 2012-05. It was just waiting for data to be created, which I just did we just created order 807 which created a pop pull order of 305 so now we have data ready to be processed so what are we going to do with that data first off we're going to have some input columns I basically selected all the input columns uh, from my select clause I actually had a post error which was created as a an empty field and we can actually write data back to this select clause and then move that on to the audit trail so we can actually see if the post was complete which I'll, I'll try to remember to show you here and you can see this is uh, let me go back there a minute this is VSTA script and it's Vi Microsoft Visual Basic 2008 you could have selected C sharp our objects run in C sharp just standard .NET object. We have a lot of people that code in C Sharp and call our objects. So the first thing is we had to set up references. And I'm referencing our all system, which is really our system manager, the OE tricks transaction, which allows us to do the uh, OE transactions, which I'm going to integrate in the composite transaction, and the pop transactions. Now this this script here 
will cycle for each input row. And, and this is a template when you when you open this up in VSTA and dra drag in a script, this is all empty in here, but it's all set up to process uh, a row. I dimmed uh, a connection, a standard connection for uh, our objects. I've dimmed another object to do the release of the order, report production, a confirmed ship, and then we're going to bill the order, and then we're actually going to run some SQL script and update some fields in the order and this will all be done as one business transaction. Any one of these transactions fails and the entire transaction will roll back. So the first thing we're going to do is assign parameters. We're just going to be looking at the local host, my local uh, SQL server, and then database 10. And we're going to open a connection. True means it's going to be done inside a transaction wrapper, which we would always do if we're doing a business transaction. This is going to give us um, a dim connection that is now open. Test the, we're going to test the open state here. Then we're going to do a release, and that's very simple. We're just going to do a connection assignment to the object, and then we're going to merely sign the manufacturing order number, the pop order, a transaction date, and a return error message. That's all we re need to do to do a release. We're going to check, check its success. Based on its success, we're going to move on and do a, a, a production of the pop pull order. This is as a few more parameters on the production side. Uh, you can see some of those. You know, report production, set the dock date, whether it's a complete order or not, uh, the unit cost if it's not calculated, uh, we've got some percent under and overage checks, username pa is passed through for audits. Uh, update the order quantity, back flush all components or not, several different, a well, few more uh, method parameters, but again they're all IntelliSense. Then we'll check that success. Now we're gonna, now that we've done that and we set update the order, we, we now have updated the uh, quantity of ship, which was zero now, should be, would be 10, which matches the order quantity amount. On confirm ship, we're going to sign the connection. We're going to sign the property for the order line, item, location, quantity, username, and then we're going to confirm ship as a post. If I had bins and lots, either for the uh, pop production or for this uh, confirm ship, we'd have had to sign a collection of bins and lots, and you can have as many bins and lot combinations as you want that would have been assigned the order, uh, either, either transaction. Then we're going to bill the order. We're going to assign the freight amount, the miscellaneous amount. Uh, several of these have other properties. I could actually assign the uh, freight and, and miscellaneous account codes and things like that. And I'm just going to do a post update to move this to from a status 7, confirm ship, to a, a status 8 pretty much done with the order, but now I want to update the order header and set extra 8 set to priority. I'm just going to say these are priority orders. We're managing these very rapidly. Just more work to do. And all these were done together, including this SQL transaction was all done using our connection object. So if we do uh, our OCON object to, and then we use the SQL processor, which is part of our system manager, then the SQL transaction is done inside the transaction wrapper. I could have done an in or out. Because it's in, it is now committed with all the other transactions. Everything now is committed together. So if I'm successful in everything, then I will close the connection and I will do a commit. If not, I'll do a rollback and all of these transactions will be combined together. That's how the transactions work. Once that is complete, then the last thing we'll do is we'll map all the input columns to the output destination columns. Oops, I close that down. Of this autolog file that I've created. 
all that will be done together. Now, once we define this, then we just need to do a build. And we're ready now to incorporate this into Microsoft SQL Server. So we're going to start the SQL Server agent. I've already set this up. I've come in and I've said, let's start a new job. And right now, it's not enabled. We had to create some steps. So I inserted the SSIS job, and I just assigned the package here. I said it was a SQL Server uh, integrated services package when I set this up, pointed at it, and that, and that enabled me now to execute that package. I need to set up schedules. My schedule is going to be every minute, so I just set this up to run consistently. Now, before I enable this, I said there's there were four applications. The other application is Agility. Agility Explorer. This is a product from us. It's part of our framework that I talked about in the initial video, and. and and I've developed a couple of views using that product. This, I decided to create a view of our orders. And the order number out there, if I, you know, the one we plan to process next, if you remember, let's go back and look. Let's do a preview. Is 807. It's the next thing to be done. And it's not here yet. And I can hit a refresh, and it's not happening that order is not being processed. This is the audit output file. So this would only pick that up if, if the transaction was successful. This is an OE master list, which I'll be refreshing. And it shows that 807 is an order out there. I just refreshed it. And it's a status one, has not been processed yet with bike PP on the order, coin a ship of zero. So these are two transact. We're going to be using this to watch the data. Now I'm going to come back over here to SQL Server Reporting Services. We're going to enable SQL Server. We're going to that job, and then we're going to start job at step, and it's going to process and run. It's actually just starting its first process cycle, and it's executing the pop report. I didn't want to wait a minute or so for the script to execute. Uh, if I left it to run and entered another order and waited a minute, we would see another one being processed. So we actually did process that, and I'm going to refresh this. And this audit trail says it's already run. If I put another order in, but we're not going to wait the extra minute or so for it to happen, it would immediately just process the next order through the system. Now I've also given us the ability to look at orders over here as well. So we're going to look at the order again. This is the nice thing about Agility. I, I use the same order button. Uh, Agility lets you just keep building these views and then connecting them up to different views. So this is actually exactly the same view. I just There's a lot of reusability. It's now a status 8. And if we look at the order, it's now all it's been issued and confirmed shipped and these are the distributions and this item also has a pop order and I can also drill into the pop order and see that there's already been production done which for one Z transaction and all these these link together so we've shown how we can go in and enter transactions through uh, SSIS, create them as scheduled jobs, run them as an untenanted process, and now you've gotten a little bit of an insight into how the object interfaces work. Thank you very much, and I hope you move on to watch the last of the videos. Thank you.